Anyway, the writer's group was endlessly obsessed with <laughs> what is dramatic action. I, I, what is dramatic? I don't think I was taught that in university. Well, you should have known where they don't know what it is. I didn't have is, class with you. There they are wouldn't. lots of books about it. <laughs> um, and they all get it wrong. I think, I, I forget what Aristotle said, but he's wrong. Uh, dramatic action is so simple you can't grasp it. It's one person is changed by another. That's it. That's pretty simple. Yeah. So if you're doing Breaking Bad, you go into it with the idea you have this teacher who is transformed into a mad drug lord. So great. And then you take it all the way through. Mm -hmm. So they have that, they understand that. They do it. And they're going to do that. And tragedy starts off with somebody in a pretty good state and the boss of everything. And then you chuck him out of the pecking order. That's what drama is. But people have an inhibition about that. Why? Well, improvisers have an inhibition about it because they don't want it all be altered. Mm -hmm. But if you give somebody a page and say, write about two characters, they won't have them altered on the page. So it's, just, it's the same inhibition when you write that the improviser has. And yet we still long for the change. The we as an audience long for the, the change. The audience wants the change. But the artist seems held back from it for some reason. Well, we saw it today. That You just walk into that space and... <laughs> All of your wants change. The audience wants to connect everything. The improvisers want to disconnect everything. Is, you th is it the same with actors? Do you think working on a text? Wonderful, also wonderful actors make wonderful changes. Ah. Profound changes. But, yeah, but a, a director can help mm -hmm. if they know. The actor would not make a change, but you can push the change. But wonderful actors, it's their job. Mm -hmm. And, and you remember, I remember for like 30 years ago, Brideshead were visited. The first one, it must be 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Olivier is Lord somebody or other. <laughs> he decides to drive around the estate, but he's been very ill. And he comes to the top of the steps and he says, and the car is waiting for him and the chauffeur has got the door open and the valets are crowded around him. And he says, not now, in the summer. But he's, Olivier says, not now, in terror. And he's in the summer, just to cover up. Mm. And I remember that change now, but an inferior actor wouldn't do it. Right. Yeah. Sure. Oh, Salvini said, as Othello at the end, he says, I have done the state much service, as they know. Like that. So the powers in making changes and truthful changes and understanding and reading a play, looking for that. Yeah, that's where the power lies. So in the writer, did you figure that out in the writer's group or is that something no, that came later? No, <laughs> it totally fucked up. Uh, but lots of writers would do things like Arnold would get people to jump on tables to make speeches and things because we understood it has something to be... No, I understood it when I saw a play called Akiru, or Living by Kurosawa. And that, they absolutely clear. There's a scene, uh, it's about a man. Oh, it's like, I could get much too emotional talking about this. Do you want me to hold your hand? No. Okay. Oh, we have to. Okay, I don't think that's going to help. Hmm. There's a man whose life is worthless. And he gets cancer of the stomach. And he has no idea what to do. He tries prostitution. He tries all kinds of stuff. He tries, tries drink. And he shouldn't drink on that stomach. But there's a young girl who is full of life. And he follows her around. And he takes her to restaurants and buys her meals and things. And she gets more and more pissed off with him. She does? Yes, yeah, she does. Okay. Well, because he's a young girl. Is he, this is an old guy. <laughs> young girls are pissed off, yeah? <laughs> yeah, and you see, like he's dying. Uh -huh. He's hopeless. He can, I mean, he can't do anything energetic. He's finished. <laughs> so, she says, I won't see you anymore. And there's this wonderfully directed scene in a, 
uh, a factory, they make toy rabbits. There's all these toy rabbits out there. Have you seen this film? No, I'm going well, to look it up now. You should have seen this film. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes I show it on courses. I always tell them it's a boring film, <laughs> but they might like to see it. And that is, uh, the ending is very Japanese, and they're breaking all kinds of taboos we don't know about, so it's tedious. But they need to see it, and if they want to see it, I'll show it to them. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, they also thank God that you showed me that film. But I don't, I don't show it to. I show it after the, in the evening. Yeah. I don't force them to come to see it. So then they come with their own free will. Anyway, he, he actually goes to the factory to see her. And she agrees to see him one more time. And she, uh, live in a restaurant. There's a party of young schoolgirls. It's a birthday party in the restaurant. There's a couple of young lovers over there. And she's so bored with him. And they're sitting at the table. And she's looking around at the kids and at the two lovers. And <sighs> finally she said, what do you want? Why, do you, why are you pestering me? Why are you hanging around me? And, and she, I, I would have to list all the things that happen. She goes through many transitions from anger to terror, actually, to bewilderment, to, yeah, so many states. Because he tries to explain to her and he can't do it. Hmm. And finally he says, I've got cancer. And it's directed fantastically. Because then he makes a move around, he traps her against the wall. And he looks like a lunatic, and she's petrified. And they're just basically talking heads. But and one person's changed by the other. They're both changed. They're both changed. Profoundly. And at that moment, you say, ah, oh, of course. Why does it make you emotional? Dramatic action. Is because you can, feel the act, you can feel the power of it. Mm. You say that's what dramatic action is. Of course, it's people being changed. And non-playwrights have an inhibition about changing them. And the great playwrights make profound and wonderful changes. But it's so simple. Mm -hmm. How could one not see that? Mm 